honestly comparable to a Taiwanese athlete winning an Olympic medal. And it might even be more of a big deal because more people probably watch drag race than the Olympics. Hey everybody, my name is Nick. I'm a director and editor, and today I'm going to be talking about the season 16 finale of RuPaul's Drag Race. Spoilers for the season, although there are probably spoilers in the title of this video, so uh, I guess I already spoiled the show with you if you read the title of this video. <laughs> but I want to be talking about why Nymphia Wynn winning RuPaul's Drag Race matters so much to so many people. Uh, Nymphia Wind is a drag queen from Taiwan. She's the first Taiwan drag queen to compete on the show and that is a big, big, big deal. And it's an even bigger deal that she ended up winning and becoming America's next drag superstar. Uh, so why does this matter so much to so many people? Why does it matter particularly to people from Taiwan? I lived in Taiwan for 15 years. I love Taiwan. It's like my favorite place in the whole world. So it matters a lot to me too. Seeing somebody from Taiwan win Drag Race was like pretty emotional for me and for Sonia who's from Taiwan. We were rooting for Nymphia from the beginning of the show. And it's because Taiwan doesn't have representation on the world stage. You know, it's not allowed to be in the UN. It's often not allowed to be called a country in many areas. And there are political reasons for that that I don't want to get into in a video about drag race. I'll get into it a little bit, but not too much. Um, but this is a big deal. It's like whenever Taiwan wins something in the world arena, it highlights the country and it puts it in people's hearts and in people's minds. And that is a big deal. It's almost like a, like a form of cultural diplomacy. So Nymphia Wynn winning RuPaul's Drag Race is like drag queen diplomacy. It's bigger than just the show. It's like almost like socio-political. It's kind of crazy actually. And because Drag Race is this huge cultural phenomenon. It's appointment viewing. It's one of the few shows left on the planet that is like appointment viewing. It's like drag race and sports. Drag race is like sports. So Nymphia Wynn winning drag race is honestly comparable to a Taiwanese athlete winning an Olympic medal. And it might even be more of a big deal because more people probably watch drag race than the Olympics. And there's only one winner of Drag Race every year. And in the Olympics, there's like a bunch of people that win medals. And so that is the big reason why like this is so important for people from Taiwan to see somebody from their country uh, represent them. And she's going to be representing Taiwan to the world and putting it into people's psyche that like, hey, this is a great place. And anybody who's been to Taiwan knows that, but you know, we all want the world to see like, hey, this little country that is very uh, unique and beautiful and great we want people to know about it and to appreciate its existence because going into the politics a little bit if a country an unnamed country were to invade taiwan say imagine how that feels if the winner of drag race is from that country and could talk about that so this is like this is like a cultural safeguard if you will in asia taiwan is really a beacon of of the gay community it's the most open country in Asia to gay culture. It's had the first pride parade. It still has the biggest pride parade in Asia. It's the first country in Asia to legalize gay marriage. So people in Asia look to Taiwan as this example of openness and free expression and Nymphia fully embodies that, that uh, ethos in the way that she is and the way that she performs. As the season started, we were rooting for Nymphia, obviously. Um, this is a pro-Taiwan household. We, are, we love Taiwan here. So when we found out there was a Taiwanese queen on the show, we were like, okay, automatically, she's the one we want to win. But you know, we didn't know how she was gonna be. We hadn't seen her previously. And so right at the beginning of the show, we were like, oh, as long as she's not the first one out, please don't be the first one out. And she came into the competition and she started slaying like right away. The talent performance that she did was she brought cultural dance to it. You could tell right away that Nymphia knew what the point of Drag Race was. She knew how to represent herself. She knew how to showcase herself. And immediately we could tell, okay, she's, she's not gonna be first out. She's gonna go very far in the competition. And she consistently had 
really, really good showings in every episode. She had these high fashion looks. Every outfit that Nymphia did for the whole show was meticulous, it was perfect. She had some of the best outfits I've ever seen on Drag Race. She's just really good at designing clothes. She wins the ball. And so winning the ball challenge, which is a design challenge on Drag Race, is a really a good indicator that this person is like a front runner to be the winner. Like a lot of the time, the person that wins the ball wins the entire season. So that's a huge, huge thing to be able to win the ball. It shows that as a drag queen, you have that fashion sense, you know how to design clothes, which is such like a big part of the show. There's always, every season, there's always a couple people who like don't know how to sew. And it's like, why are you on Drag Race if you don't know how to sew? So if you come into Drag Race, uh, expert sewer, you know how to make clothes, uh, she made a lot of her own looks in the season, which a lot of people don't do, you are ahead of the game. And so when she won the ball, then the wheels started turning like, whoa, Nymphia Wind could win the whole season. And at the beginning, she was really, every episode, just doing a great job. So it kind of felt like, okay, she's like a clear front runner. This might be a Sasha Colby situation where it's like always kind of clear that Nymphia is gonna win. But then, Snatch game happened. <laughs> the ball is kind of one part of the show where you see the design element of being a drag queen, which is a big part of it. But then snatch game is the other big, big challenge on the show where the queens that win snatch game really show themselves off to be the charismatic fan favorite. It's all about the personality, being able to have the comedy and the think on your feet. And you can interact with Rue and you see, okay, does Rue get this person and get what they're doing? and Nymphia bombed Snatch Game, which is not good. <laughs> because then you start to see this kind of crack where, okay, maybe Nymphia doesn't have the charisma. Maybe she's not that funny. Maybe, maybe Rue doesn't connect with her. And you saw that throughout the show that that really hit her confidence. Not winning Snatch Game kind of turned her story on the show and she started to every episode you start to think like is she going to be able to do this and she wasn't as confident and you could tell in her performances that she was second guessing herself every episode it started to be like is nymphia gonna get cut is this is she gonna be out and this was a really really good season of the show and there were a lot of really really good drag queens on this season i think this is maybe one of the best seasons of the show that i can remember and you know you had these really strong personalities you had plain jane who was shady, but also like was sh showing this nice side of her too. You had Safira, who was this really consistent mother figure who was really nice and helping out all of the queens. And so it really did kind of feel like this was gonna be Safira's season to win because she had this aura about her, this mother figure aura where she was never failing. She was helping everybody out, everybody liked her. It was like a little bit of like a Bianca Del Rio storyline or the Sasha Colby storyline from the season before. And then the final episode before they were gonna decide who goes into the finale, the final elimination challenge, they do this interview challenge. Nymphia does it and she really opens up about her feelings and her confidence issues. And she relates it to kind of the Asian community and beauty standards in the Asian community. And it just feels really authentic and really real. And you see and understand what she's been struggling with and why she has this interesting confidence issue. And then her storyline starts to make sense again. She wins that challenge and she goes into the finale. And so much of Drag Race is the producers trying to craft a story around you. And if they can craft a story around you, then they can make you the winner. Because that's what they want. They want a story around a character. Reality TV, even though it's supposedly real, it's all about story. It's all about creating a story for these different people, right? And Nymphia's story after that interview made sense. Everything in the story made sense. So her being really good in the beginning and being a perfectionist and then having this moment of, of kind of loss of confidence and then coming back and showing that, no, I'm gonna be myself, I'm gonna be confident again. That is a fantastic story. So as she goes into the finale, it's really looking like, hey, Nymphia has a real shot to win this. She's up against two people that are really also strong competitors. Safira, who is this mother figure. You know, she's always crushing all the challenges. She's super funny. She's a great performer. She's a warm personality. This is also a good story to go against her. She felt like she deserved it. She was the, the old drag queen who'd been around for a while who like should get the win. So that's kind of what I was feeling going into the finale. And then you also have Jane, who's a very, very polished performer. Less likely that she was gonna win, but a lot of people really liked her because 
for the season, she really brought a lot of what this season 16 was about. She brought this shade, this fun energy. She revitalized the show. So there's a little bit of a like, she's, she makes good TV. She is interesting and charismatic. So she has a chance to win in that way too, because she's been doing a good job at creating this kind of positive uh, atmosphere and positive uh, fan response to season 16. So it's a toss up going into the finale. I personally, really wanted Nymphia to win, but I kind of was like, I think it's gonna be Safira. In my heart, I had prepared for Safira to win. And so then we, watched, we started watching the finale, and in the final they do these three performances first. Each one does an individual performance, then Rue picks the top two, and then they do a lip sync battle. So of the performances, Nymphia's and Safira's really stand out. Uh, Jane's was probably the least interesting of the performances, which is a little bit felt a little bit unfair to her, but I mean, Nymphia and Safira just really dominated the stage in their performances and they had these really interesting costume changes and just great concepts. And so it was clear that the two of them were gonna go on, but I was still nervous because I felt like, okay, I think if Nymphia can get to the finale, I think Safira is the one that people think is gonna win, but if she can do this final lip sync battle and she can really, really sell it, then she can win the whole show, right? Because that's, there's your last chance. It's like in the way the show works is the lip sync is kind of the final decider. And I think they factor in who they're gonna pick based on the things you've done before. But if your lip sync is so good that everybody watching is like, that's the best lip sync, you can't deny it, that person has to win. So. What I was really hoping for as we were watching the finale is like, just make it to the final lip sync. If she makes it to the final lip sync, then she has a shot. And she did, she made it to the final lip sync. And as it starts, you don't know what to expect because a really interesting thing is that Nymphia has never lip synced. She'd never been in the bottom. So if she's never been in the bottom, we've never seen her lip sync yet through the whole season. So we don't know what to expect. And that is a huge advantage because we've seen Safira lip sync. So we kind of know what her style is, but nobody knows what Nymphia's style is. So whatever she's gonna do is gonna feel fresh and interesting. And Sasha Colby, who won the year before, had that same advantage. She came into it and nobody knew what Sasha's lip sync style was gonna be. So when it comes out, it feels like, whoa, this is cool, this is fresh, this is unique, this is fun. And so Nymphia has that advantage, but she has to back it up. When Nymphia comes out and starts to, starts to lip sync, you can tell very quickly that she is very good at lip syncing. She set up this bubble tea reveal right in the beginning, which was like a Sasha Velour moment, one of the most famous moments from lip syncs on the show, and it elevated it. It was shocking and like this bubble, these balloons came out, it was like very visually cool and interesting. It was a cool, fun idea, good reveal, and she immediately gets the attention and the crowd on her side. And then she keeps that momentum going. You can see her through the lip sync, interacting with the crowd, connecting with the crowd, owning the stage. She did stunts, she did it all. I mean, it was really the best lip sync I've seen on the show maybe. And that's because I'm biased because I love Nymphia. But I really think that it was one of the best lip syncs ever on the show. She did all of the things that you need to do. She had interesting concepts, she had good reveals, she was doing crazy stunts. She did a flip and ripped her for her costume and did a reveal mid flip. Like that is crazy. I mean, that was one of the greatest moments of TV I've seen. She just knew how to own the stage. She knew how to command the performance. And you saw that this person whose performance we hadn't seen yet, who had kind of mentioned in one of the previous episodes, like I'm a really good lip syncer. She mentioned that she was good, but you didn't really know. And then when you see it, you're like, whoa, she knows what she's doing. I mean, even the very final moment of the lip sync, Safira does the split, which is really impressive, and Nymphia just delays her split slightly, just a few a millisecond later, so she lands after and gets the final moment of it. And when the lip sync's over, she's still on, she's still like performing, she's still commanding the crowd and getting everybody on her side. It was one of the best performances I've ever seen. She really knew how to command the stage, and she was undeniable. And it was really an inspirational performance to watch. It was incredible to see. I mean, it's a great message. No matter who you are, no matter what struggles you have with your confidence, with anything, you can overcome all of it by being undeniably great, by doing uh, an amazing job, by showing people how amazing you are, by believing in yourself. You know, you can overcome your country not being recognized by the UN if you are just undeniable. And that's what Nymphia was. She was undeniably the best. And it was so cool, and it was so cool to see somebody from Taiwan do that. That's why Nymphia winning 
is so significant and it means so much to so many people, especially people who love Taiwan. That's why I cared so much about this season of Drag Race and why Nymphia winning was such a great moment. Uh, let me know in the comments how you felt about it. What did you think? Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, subscribe, do the things. I don't talk about Drag Race that much, so if you're here just for Drag Race, you know, we talk about other things. We talk about Taiwan a lot, we talk about food, we talk about bubble tea, we talk about movies, we talk about culture. Uh, give me a follow, tell your friends, and I'll see you guys next time.